We can go on our scripture this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse number 1. Hallelujah. And thank you folks for singing, worshiping God. It's good to see this. It's good to see young people that sing and worship God. Praise God. It's good to see that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Moreover, brother, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. Hallelujah preaching to you this morning, living the, the resurrection life. Living the resurrection life. Would you, would you pray with us right now in this room? Father, again, we, we come to you. We're grateful and thankful that, that you, O oh God, have come amongst us today. Hallelujah. I pray, God, today in this room that, O oh God, that resurrection life would flow freely. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. And thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. Everything that resists you in this house today. Amen. We come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We, oh, God. Oh, God. Rebuke, oh, God. Every lie, every doubt, oh, God. Every fear, every deception, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bring it to naught, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Well, I don't know if you can do this. I don't know. We should be able to. But let's just, let's just, for a moment, let's just flow in the Holy Ghost. Perhaps you don't even understand what I'm saying. Let's just flow in the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. You ought to be able to sense God even now. And you ought to be able to move into the Spirit of God very, very easily. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, my Jesus. Ah, oh, my Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Worship you, God. Worship you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you. Thank you, God. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. You may be you may be seated this morning. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul in Ephesians would talk about the mystery that had been revealed, and that was that Christ is in us. Amen, which is the, the hope of glory. You go back into the Gospels, you will see Jesus as he desperately reaches out to a Samaritan woman who, whose life has been anything but promising. Five husbands and the fellow she's with now is not even her husband. He would see past the, the, the life, what life does. To an individual. He would see past that. In fact, many believers in this house this morning, life is messing with you. Amen. And in fact, it's it's overcoming you if you want to know the truth. Amen. And so he saw this woman in, in this condition and, and he just took the simple subject of water. Hallelujah. And, and asked her for a drink. And of course, she would be filled with the prejudice that she had experienced from Jews and uh, how can you even deal with me? First of all, I'm a woman and not only that, I'm, I'm, I'm a Samaritan and you have no dealings with us. But by the time he was done talking to her, she was desiring living water, that everlasting water, that everlasting life that comes from living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get into chapter 7 of John, you will read that Jesus comes on that last great day of the feast and he stands up and he cries out. So it was not just a meek voice, but it was a loud cry. If any man thirsts, let him come on to me and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure it got some people's attention that day. And he would go on to say, he that believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he didn't stop there. John records in the 39th verse and tells us, This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Hallelujah. There are people in the New Testament, in the Gospels, that definitely God is moving on and working in and, and doing powerful things. It records that about John and the Baptist himself and about his father Zacharias and, and, and some others, amen. It talks about that move of the Spirit in their life. Hallelujah. They were flowing, if you please, if I could put it like this, in the Holy Ghost, at least in the measure that they knew it. Praise God. His disciples would spend three and a half years 
walking with resurrection. How can you say that, Pastor? Well, he would say to both Mary and to Martha, I am the resurrection. And so three and a half years, they would experience the resurrection walking amongst them. Yet after he resurrected and would come into a room, the Bible says that they were filled with fear. They did not understand how God's spirit operates and what God does. Amen. These are men that were chosen by him. Among them is the guy that gets the label, the poor fella, Dowden Thomas. But if you read his, his confession there in John, he says, my Lord and my God, and he never carries out what he said he was going to do, put his hand, his fingers in his nail print and thrust his hand into his side. He just hits the floor. There's something about resurrection today. It changes how you think. It changes how you talk. It changes how you walk. It changes even your apparel. That's what resurrection does today. Hallelujah. It'll change your mindset. How can you say that, Pastor? Well, in Acts chapter 1, after he's already talked to them about the power of God, it refers back to John the Baptist who said that there was one coming after him in whose shoes he was not worthy and to untie, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And just, just a verse later, they're wanting to know when he's going to restore the kingdom. They weren't real focused on what he was wanting to do, just like some of you this morning. You're not real focused either. You didn't come with the intent to walk in the Spirit this morning. You didn't come to be filled with the Spirit. I'm not trying to judge you or be critical of you. Amen. But we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost even today. We need the Spirit of God to work upon us even today in this house. You can be around the resurrection. You can be influenced by the resurrection. But you need to be affected by the resurrection. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We used to sing that song. You got to have the Holy Ghost and fire. That burning thing that keeps the prayer worth turning. That kind of religion. Amen. That you cannot conceal. It makes you move. Makes you cry. Makes you shout. It's real. I got my hand right in the wine. I never figured this part out. Winding chain. My soul's been anchored in my Jesus name. You see, I'm filled within. Free from sin. I've been born again. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about this morning? And I was some some somewhere with us here, but it's probably the guy singing a song that sort of sort of caused you to go off astray. But some of you was at least here with us. Hallelujah. Hello. It was it was on the day of Pentecost when it really broke loose on them. They had been around the Spirit of God. They had seen the results of resurrection. But when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and when they began to speak with other tongues. Amen. The complete manifestation of God's Spirit in their life literally changed them at that moment. Okay, all right. We'll just we'll slow back down. Slow back down. You see, I've been around dead folks. And, uh, I've had loved ones that was dead that I was there. I can stroke their hand. I can feel their hair. I can touch their face. There perhaps is still some of the warmth there, but I know that that's going to dissipate, and then it's going to be, that body's just going to become cold. No matter the stroking of their hair and the touching of their face, and or perhaps a kiss on the forehead, they they. they 
They did not respond. They didn't respond. There was no movement of the eyelash and there was no, no nothing with the body that indicated that they even, even knew that they had been touched. Well, because they're dead, sir. Well, yeah, I, I know that. I know. Amen. But, but when you get the Holy Ghost, just, just Him stroking your hair and just His touch of your, your arm and just, just, just walking in the room begins to do something for you. You see, he lived a resurrection life and he wanted his disciples to live a resurrection life. Not only did he want them to live a resurrection life, he wants you and I to live a resurrection life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But when you're dead, you don't know what all the fuss is about. When you're dead, worshiping God, singing to God, praising God, standing on our feet, doing a Apache war dance, whatever Roberta was doing. When you're dead, it seems strange. And, and that is acceptable for somebody that doesn't know God. Who has never experienced the resurrection. But if you have experienced the resurrection. It ought to get your attention. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's no wonder. That as it was said of them that they turned their world upside down. Because that's what resurrection does. Resurrection life, if it gets in your house, it'll turn your house upside down. Hallelujah. When, 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 you, when you release it, when you release it, when you release it, you see, for resurrection life to work in you, you got to take, amen, your hands off of it. You got to surrender to it. We're not a bunch of puppets this morning in this house. God doesn't come here and say, all right, praise me. I, I can't even do it. Strings over my head. You know, we're, we're not that at all. We, we should be attuned to the spirit of God. We should, you know, you, in fact, what another truth. Every one of us that are supposed to have resurrection life should be feeling after his presence. This is, this is what I'm talking about when I say to you, we get so filled up with life that, that it nullifies, it seems, that very expression of God in the Spirit. You know what you ought to do for the next half hour with me? You ought to divorce yourself from everything that you had planned to do today. Amen. Brother, Brother Metz told us it was going to be nice outside. Have a nice time with your family. But what we need to do right now, we need to divorce ourselves from everything other than to get into the presence of the King. To know resurrection is flowing in our hearts and in our lives. We need to get off our phones. We need to get, we're not using our, our iPad, amen, for the Word of God. We need to shut it down and get into His presence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Living a resurrected life. Oh, living resurrection life. My God, my God. My God, my God, my God. My God. You see, see what can happen because of our present state. Because of what you and I have to deal with. Amen. Paul would say in Romans 8 and 10, I'm reading from the message, but for you who welcome him in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin. 
You yourself experience life on God's term. You still are struggling with flesh and, and spirit and the limitations that come because of flesh. The truth. It's the truth. God's not the problem today. We're the problem. God's not the problem today. It's what we're walking in. That's the problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, uh, you'll read in the book of Romans. You will read uh, in chapter 6. It talks about dying. It talks about being a slave or servant. Either to God or to sin. You get into chapter 7. It seems like Paul's one confused puppy. You know, you know, I want to walk in the spirit, but yet I'm contending, amen, with, with my flesh and my mind. And, you know, it goes through all this stuff and, oh, wretched man that I am. And by the time you get done reading chapter 7, you, you feel pretty good at least about your sinful lifestyle. And you feel pretty good about, amen, living your own. Well, see, the apostle Paul talked about the struggle. But, but may I remind you that there's a chapter 8. Now, you don't get it. But in chapter 8, he starts talking about living the resurrection life. He will tell us that there's no condemnation to them that do what? Walk in the Spirit. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are told in, in that same chapter, verse, verse 5 will instruct us, that we, although, though for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's why believers can sit in this house and be unresponsive to God. It, why? Because of what they're minding. Because of what they're minding. They're minding the things of the flesh. That's not resurrection life. But those who mind, amen, the spirit. And they're, they're, they're mine in resurrection life. Amen. You can't live for God in the resurrection. Amen. With your mind and your heart filled with flesh. In fact, you may even be sitting out today saying, hey, all I feel from you right now is condemnation. It, it ain't me, baby. I ain't the one that's doing that to you. There's somebody that's coming to you and saying, hey, 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 hey. I'm resurrection. Can't you experience me today? You're supposed to be able to experience me today. I filled you with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. I realize, I realize, amen, that the carnal mind is hostile to the things of God. Amen. That's why you, you can't grab spiritual concepts because your mind is involved in fleshly things. Amen. And you don't understand. And what is happening to you. Amen. You are, you are uh, uh, becoming dead. You are living in the deadness. Rather than in the resurrection life. But I'm here to tell you today. That he's come. To give us life. And that more abundantly. And some people say, oh, if this is abundant life, I sure I've been it's been I've been sold sold short. Well, the problem is not that you've been sold short. The problem is where you're walking. Let, let, let me let me just back up here. Paul would say in Ephesians 2. Verse 1, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. What, what does he mean? We are simply not responsive to God. God can walk by. He can breathe on us. He can touch us. But we're not responsive to him. Why? Because we're dead in our sins and trespasses. In the book of Hebrews, we are warned. Amen. That if we're not careful, sin can harden our hearts. And we are actually told 
to provoke one another, to, to come to one another and to work together and become transparent gentlemen and ladies. Become transparent. Become honest. Become, hey, I ain't walking in resurrection today. Well, let's, let's join. We're going to walk in resurrection. We're going to walk in resurrection because he gave you the Holy Ghost. You see, you see, do you, you think the devil quit? Hey, did he, do you think he gave up when you got the Holy Ghost? You think he gave up when you started speaking in tongues? No, he, what he's going to do, he's going to work to keep you from walking in a resurrection life. He's going to do every, you know, that's why cars break down. That's why some of you get sick. That's why the, the money's short when you need more money. Amen. And you quit spending all that money then. I'm sorry. That, that just, just added, man. That, that just added. That just, just, just added. Just added. That's an add-on. You can disregard it. I don't know if that was the Holy Ghost or not, but you can, you can just disregard it. And, and you struggle. That's why, amen, that a husband and wife, they will fight. They're not fighting in the Holy Ghost. Let me remember, they're not fighting in the Holy Ghost. That's why children will fight with their parents. They ain't fighting in the Holy Ghost. That's why you'll fight with your brothers and sisters in God. Because you ain't in the Holy Ghost. Resurrection life doesn't act like that. Hallelujah. What acts like that is our flesh. What acts like that is the influence of the enemy, who the Bible says is the prince of the power of the air, who is doing his best to defeat God's people. But the scripture tells us in Ephesians 2 and 5 that we who were dead in trespasses made us to alive together with Christ. I, I know that's just a bunch of words to us right now. But you have to understand, you were infused with something. I remember my son Nathan having infusion. I remember when he had transfusions. I mean, he would come in lethargic. Amen. Very, very tired, very slow. And then he'd get a couple units of blood. And it was remarkable the change that came in him, uh, on him. Amen. Very visible to us that now he had energy, he had life. Oh, my brothers and sisters, all you need today is a unit from Jesus. You need a unit from Jesus. Maybe a couple units may do the trick. But when you get that, when you get that flowing in you, when you get that working in you, my God, it changes everything. 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 Praise God. How can I sing the, the songs of Zion when I'm walking in my flesh? How can I praise Him when, amen, I, I haven't praised Him since last Sunday. How, how, can I, how can I pray when I haven't prayed in, in weeks? You know, how, yeah, man, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we got to move into the resurrection life. The life that changed the apostles. The life that made them the men of God that became made them the women of God that they became living the resurrection life we spend too much time complaining we said we we spend we spend too much time focusing on our troubles Jesus himself said in this world you will face tribulation you're gonna face affliction you're gonna face pressure but be of good cheer I have overcome the world well how did he overcome the world through resurrection life. You're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing on the wrong thing. I don't hear too many people talking about the joy of the Holy Ghost today or the peace of the Holy Ghost or the righteousness of the Holy Ghost. But I hear a lot of people talking about other stuff. Living the resurrection life. My God. My God. You need to get a dose of the Holy Ghost. 
wouldn't hurt any of us to get a dose of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, are you saying they don't got the Holy Ghost? No, I just said you needed a dose. You know, there, there's, a, there's a difference between having a little bit and a lot. You know, when, when, when your gas tank, at least it used to, I don't know if it works the same anymore. When it got low, amen, you got water in the bottom of your gas tank and you get it down to a certain thing and, and, your, and your engine's sucking up water. And I'm here to tell you from testimony and from witness that, amen, on a blizzard day and going into work with a tank on empty was not too wise on my part. Because when I came outside, amen, that gas line got froze up. And what I needed was some heat. I needed some heat. Well, the heat is the Holy Ghost. What you need today is you need the heat of the Holy Ghost. You need the resurrection life. It'll change how you think about others. You know, you know people are going to offend you. People are going to do wrong against you. You're even going to perceive some things that they're doing wrong against you and they weren't, but you're going to perceive it. But in the Holy Ghost, it gives us an entirely different perspective. It made us alive. Is this all right? Is this all right? My God. My God. My God. When's the last time you got in the Holy Ghost? Sister Roberta was trying to get there today. You know, it's just, you need to, you know, some of you, you, you hold it in so much when it does erupt. It's to the moon. We, we need to erupt more. All right, all right, all right. You see, there are some evidences of what resurrection is like. You know, I, I can look at the scripture and I know Paul has moments when he struggles. He has moments when he's in fear, doing the work of God. He, he has the struggle, but I, 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 you know, and he even talks about there being false brethren and perils of false brother, and perils of countrymen, and a whole bunch of perils. And, but he, he never complains. This is, Sister Lisa, this is that moment. You know what I'm talking about. He, he never complains. How many on this side have not complained this week? Would you stand? How many in the middle of you have not complained this week? Would you stand? How many on this side have not complained this week? Would you stand? Preacher, how about you? I'm already standing. Maybe I ought to be sitting. Where does resurrection life complain? Come on. Find me the place where Jesus was complaining about how he was treated. And not a one of us in this room has been treated like he was treated. All it tells me is I need more resurrection. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup lifted up. Make me whole. There, there, there's an evidence of resurrection life. Why do you think people don't want what you got? Yes, I'm there today. Why, why, why do they? Because they don't see any joy in you. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to bring you joy. They don't see any peace in you. You know, this, this is going to sound strange, and, and I'm, I'm not against Christian 
uh, what do they call it, uh, contemporary music. You know, I decided today on my way to church, I'm going back to the old stuff. You know, so I, I got Siri on my car. So I went to 65. Anybody that's got Siri, amen, 65 is the southern gospel. Amen. And they're singing the old song. You know, I, I, I realize that some things don't bring with it the peace. Even music itself can be, and I don't even know why I'm saying this right now, but even music itself can be jarring. So I said, okay, Mike, we, we, we ain't getting no Bob Dylan today, man. You're going to serve somebody. We ain't getting no Bob Dylan today. No, no, no. Right, we're going to get something. Peace. You know, you, you, you got to understand. You got to understand something. That the enemy will work on. He's the best trash talker in the game. He's mumbling under his breath when you make the shot. So you're a chum. You can't do that again. That was lucky. That was lucky. Next time I'll guard you. I'll be all over you like a blanket. Amen. You ain't going to even get a chance. He's a, he's a trash talker. And he talks the trash to you. And talks you right out of the moving of the Spirit. And He convinces you. He convinces you that it's not possible for you to walk in resurrection life. That's how He operates. So let me just, I, I got to start thinking about ending this message here. Uh, oh, man, that's early. It's only 20 after 12. And I'm only going to get half paid a day. You see, there are three times in the Gospels when resurrection meets death. Times in the Gospels. Okay, three times. One of them we talked about last week. But what crowd you're in? Crowd coming out of Nain or the crowd going into Nain? Yeah. And, and the Bible says... That when they came out of the city of Nain, and Jesus stopped that procession, right? The Bible says he touched the open coffin. This is, this is Luke 7, 14. And those that carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. Yeah. Now let me... Let me show you evidence of resurrection. Verse 15. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. He began to speak. That's what resurrection does to you. It changes your language. It changes how you talk. Amen. You, are, you start saying stuff that's a little strange. And you get to the place where it's no longer foreign to you. That you have you understand that it's the work of God's Spirit in you. And other people wonder why you spend so much time speaking that language. I'll tell you why. I'm no longer dead. I'm no longer dead. And when I'm alive, I speak differently. Talking about resurrection life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, uh, he, uh, we, you can read in the scripture. And he comes to Jairus' house and they, they tell him she's, she's dead and he says she's sleeping. And of course, they ridicule him. And that's so typical of those that are not in the spirit. They ridicule those who are in the spirit. This is so typical. And he puts them outside and he, and the Bible says in Luke 8 54. That he took her by the hand, little girl arise, and the Bible says, verse 55, and her spirit returned. And she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat, the evidence of life. The evidence of life. 
Let me just put it like this. She had a appetite. You know, it's difficult to die. And you're dead, you get a little hungry. And then the master, the resurrection comes along. Says, get up. Feed that boy. His appetite's changed. His appetite's changed. What's evidence of resurrection life? The appetite changes. You want some different stuff. You're not, you're not satisfied with living that carnality and that flesh. Amen. Living that way that's a dead end straight. That you're dying every moment you stay in that world. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, John 11. Oh, Lazarus in the grave for four days. Jesus calls him from the grave. Verse 44 says, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, his face wrapped with cloth. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You see, Lazarus had a change of clothes. He had a change of clothes, ladies and gentlemen. There's evidence. There's evidence of a resurrection life. Your speech betrays you. Your walk betrays you. Your appetite betrays you. Change of clothes betrays you. That's what resurrection life does to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, you can't hide it. It stands out. Amen. Colossians 3 and 1 says, If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. If you have resurrection life, you are seeking Him, that which is above. If you're not seeking what's above today, you're walking in that place of death. Amen. And God never intended you to stay in that place. He has resurrection for you. Oh, come on. He'll set you free from addictions if you want to be set free. He'll set you free from sexual immorality if you want to be set free. He'll set you free from anger if you want to be set free from anger. He'll set you free from whatever binds you if you want to be set free from those things. Because, hey, listen, listen amen, living resurrection life, it just, it does something to you. It does something to you. Are you still with me? Amen, amen. Okay, now, now I'm going to tread on your feet. Amen. If I hadn't done it already, I'll get to you. I'm coming. I'm coming to right where you are. See, what we're guilty of, ladies and gentlemen, we're auditors. What are you talking about? We have become auditors of the Word of God. We're auditors. In fact, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to messages, which is nothing wrong with listening to messages, and we audit them. What do you mean you audit them? Well, they tell us to do things and we never do them. You know, if, if, just, just, I'm not trying to be ugly. If, if you're, if you go, go for it. Look at all the messages, the apostolic message you can find. But it's dangerous. Just to audit. Because audit doesn't mean anything. You come out and say it was a good message. It was a good Bible study. It was good. And, and, we're, and we're good at auditing today, ladies and gentlemen. We're good at it. We know what we need to do. We know. I was sort of chewing a little bit on the adult class this morning. They get a double dose. I hope it's of the Holy Ghost. All right. You know, we read our Bibles. We don't even know what we read. We don't know what we read. And, and when we do know something, our tendency is to get puffed up. You know, the scripture says that knowledge puffs up. Some people feel really important because they got some information you don't got. 
You know, knowledge puffs up. It, it is time for us to have a relationship with Him. It's time for us to become real familiar with the resurrection. It's time. It's time to get so full of Him that when the devil comes rolling down your street and parks in your tribe and walks into your house and assaults you, you can say, I still got the joy of the Holy Ghost. I still got the joy of the Holy Ghost. This is, this is a horrible picture that I have in my mind at this moment. Horrible picture. And, uh, and I hesitate to use it. Oh, no, I don't hesitate so much because I like to use things that slap us in the face. I have to admit that. But I was sick one, one night, many years ago. I was sick. I was sick. I was sick. I was in pain. I was in the bathroom. I had waves of pain, strong pain. In fact, I thought to myself, am I going to die? That's why I didn't say it to anybody, but that's what I thought. It was late at night. And, and so, oh, this is, this is a horrible story. But, but, it, but it, it's true. And, uh, and so, you know what I, I started doing? Between the bouts of pain, I started singing. About Jesus. Well, did the pain go away? I wish I could say it went away. But I, I, I just, I kept at it. I kept at it. I'd have a bout of pain and I'd sing. Me and Jesus. They, my wife was sleeping. The family was sleeping. It's just me and Jesus alone with my issue. And I was singing. Hallelujah. Well, what's your point, preacher? I'm still here. That's my point. I still got the Holy Ghost. I got past whatever that thing was that was going on in my body. I'm here today. You're here today. Hey, it's time to be filled with the Spirit. It's time for the evidence of resurrection life to be operating you. Your appetite. Amen. What's your change of clothes? Your speech. Your walk needs to be an indication of the resurrection power that's in you. Hallelujah. I live every day with the Sanhedrin. I do. And I feel like some of you here have that same spirit, the San Sanhedrin spirit. You don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? I... Uh, the very first time I walked into where I now live, there was five, about five precious ladies sitting there. The only thing that you knew that they were alive is their mouth was moving. <laughs> let, let, let me back up. Not only was the mouth moving, but they were checking me over from head to foot. Now it makes you want to look at yourself. Uh, but there's another part of me that just wants to wave and say, hi, hi. I'm not sure if that's Jesus or not, but that's, there's that part in me that wants to do that. But you see the Sanhedrin spirit, it's critical. It's dissecting everything. It is not the spirit of Jesus. The Sanhedrin spirit crucified him. Let me run that by again. The Sanhedrin spirit crucified him. Now I'm here to tell you that I have not stepped outside of this book this morning. I have not stepped outside of the book of God. But if you have a Sanhedrin spirit, you're going to criticize my manner and my approach. You're going to say that, well, maybe you, you shouldn't joke or maybe you shouldn't say stuff about, you know, awful experiences in your own life, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and you're missing the point of the Word of God. You see, what God does is He, he takes His messenger and He takes what they are and He uses them 
where they're at, their experience. But if you're full of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you can get past the idiosyncrasies of this guy up here. You can laugh. You know. I'm dying to tell you a joke. I need resurrection life. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. What do you got? Let, 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 me, let me say this. If you've been baptized, that doesn't mean you got the Holy Ghost. Because when you get baptized, you're being buried with Him in baptism. Resurrection power comes by the Holy Ghost. And in the book of Acts, when they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. I'm here to tell you, you can be baptized and you've been washed off of your sin, but you need that life still in you. It's that life that's going to take you off the planet. Say, so how can you say that? Well, well Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. i got to go back to my first page. Romans chapter 8 tells us in verse 10, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost. It's not good. Enough. Hey, we got we got people sitting amongst us. We got kids sitting amongst us. You've been baptized, but you've never received the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that gives life. All right, all right. So the evidence is earn the speech, the walk, the appetite, and the change of clothes. I I'm coming home now. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus will put you in a storm, Brother Gary. He'll put you in a storm. He will. Why does he put us in a storm? Because faith that's not been tested can't be trusted. Let me run it by you again. The reason some of us are in storms is because faith that is not tested can't be trusted. So he says to them in Luke 8, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. Luke 8, verse 22. Sorry, Ginger. That's what he says. Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. What did Jesus say? Let's cross over to the other side. All right? Are you with me? All right. All right. So they get out in that sea and the, and the winds start filling the boat with water. And Jesus is sleeping. Resurrection is sleeping on the boat. And, and they, they wake him up and say, don't you care that we perish? You see, when you're an auditor, when you've just you're just reading the Bible to read the Bible. You're going to fail to understand His promises. Don't you care that we perish? Hey, hey, hey! He's the same one that said we're going to the other side. All right? We're going. Amen. But you're all caught up in the trouble. Resurrection says... You're going to go through the storm. Resurrection says it's going to get hairy sometimes. But brothers and sisters, we're on our way to the other side. Hallelujah. And so, and so the disciples looked around, saw danger. They saw danger and they looked within and they saw fear. 
But what they failed to do was look up. Because if they'd have looked up, they'd have seen God. You understand? My biggest concern for this generation and my generation is we're a bunch of wimps. I am, son. I am. We're a bunch of wimps. Right? We, we somehow think that when we got the Holy Ghost, we got the joy, and we, we got the resurrection life, that we're not going to have any storms. Oh, where did you come up with that at? Whose fairy tale have you been reading? That's, that's not what the book tells me. And we're, we got people that just, they drop out, they drop away, they get upset, they leave, they get angry, you know, and we got people sitting here that are just struggling right now. And they're battling. Amen. And things are overcoming them and, and they feel like they're being swept up in a torrent. Amen. Of this world. But that can all change. Perhaps you need to lean, o- lean over and master. I believe I'm in a perishing situation. Would you fill me with resurrection life? Would you renew me? Would you refresh me? Because I need resurrection life. I'm supposed to be living resurrection life. I'm closing, as I've already said, you see, faith and fear cannot dwell in the same heart. Can't dwell in the same heart. Does the devil come to church every Sunday? Big ugly comes. Big ugly comes. Shows up. They're not big ugly. They're precious. <laughs> Thought I got. It. Big ugly comes to church every Sunday. You know, I remember Brother Urshan. Thank you, brother. Talking one time, and and uh, he was talking to a bunch of denominational ministers, and. Uh, all about the Holy Ghost. And he, uh, so it came time for questions and answers. So one guy out there, some, some guy, some minister, says, well, does the devil show up at your church? He never comes to mine. He didn't know he left that door wide open. I'll tell you why the devil doesn't come to your church. Because nothing's happening there. Anywhere there's resurrection life, the enemy's going to come to try to discourage, try to tear down. So what's the evidence of resurrection life? Your appetite, your speech, your walk, and even a change of apparel are evidence of resurrection life. Let's stand in this room this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, This is the part I can't do anything for you. I can preach to you. I can joke. I can laugh. I can be silly. I can be other things too. But I can't change you. If If I could, I would pour the Holy Ghost out on every one of you in this room. But may I say, as kind as I can say, it would be wasted if I could do that. Because some of you don't even have an appetite for His presence. What you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, you need to do what the Scripture requires all of us to do, and that is repent. You see, it says it over there. Old Testament, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive and will heal their land. The solution has always been, if you're not in resurrection life, it's what you got to do. Are you ready for this? 
you got to die. You got to die in order for resurrection life to operate. This altar's open today.